Hello beautiful people, I'm Raish Phoenix and in today's video we're going to talk about why I quit my job. Um, if you guys haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button and hit the bell so you can get notified every time I post a new video. I, I always feel weird about talking about where specifically I worked because I feel like there's something where it's just like, I don't know, they can hold it against you. So I'm not going to say the location, but I will say I worked in a retail clothing store. I started working there when I graduated from college in October. The October after I graduated from college, which I believe was in 2015. And then I just quit in, um, I think it was May, this past May this year. So when I first started working at this place, I honestly loved it there because Previously, I, I had been working in a deli, and I feel like working in the deli kind of felt like it was like every man for himself in terms of like, I don't know, it felt like you're behind the counter and you're slicing meat for customers, but it's just like if there's somebody who doesn't take the initiative to hop on the line and slice for other customers, you're kind of left by yourself, whereas working at this clothing store gave me more of a sense of teamwork because... It was a bunch of people on the floor working together. It wasn't like you're the only person who's slicing meats and cheeses for somebody so other people can be hiding in the freezer or making a salad or something. So I appreciated working at this place because I just, it gave me more of a sense of teamwork. Um, so when I first started working there, I really enjoyed it. And then over time, I guess like with any retail job, of course there's managers that are going to come and go, there's um, co-workers that are going to come and go, and there was a point where it felt like we were just getting so many new people, but at the same time nobody was really taking the initiative to train them, and then if they were training them, it was very brief, and it was kind of like a you have to take the initiative to learn something on your own as opposed to somebody teaching it to you, if that makes sense. So it's like, I don't even know how to describe it. So let's say if you didn't know how to fold denim as somebody who was just hired, you would have to take the initiative to ask somebody how to fold the denim or even have to realize that there is a specific way to fold the denim in order for somebody to show it to you. Like, it was a very much, like, you have to, it, it's very complicated talking about things like this because it's like, if somebody doesn't know something doesn't exist, how can they ask about it? Like, if you don't know that there's a specific way to fold the denim other than the way that you've been folding it, how can you ask about it? So it's a very backwards thing to me. <laughs> like... I, I, I don't know, but um, what often happened was that it wasn't really, it wasn't really managers that were really teaching the new hires that much, it was mostly people that worked there that they trusted, and that's fine, and I was one of the people that they allowed or trusted to teach the new hires, but at the same time, it's one of those things where it's like, I get if you appreciate how I am as a worker and you appreciate my work ethic, but I really think it should be up to the manager to be training the new hires for the most part, and then sometimes on the people that are kind of like the better workers, but for the most part, I think it should be a manager type of thing. So um, what happened was eventually there were just so many new hires and very little people that have been working there for a long time that it kind of felt like a hit or miss during work days so it's like either you ended up with your core team that would help you get things done and was actually like there to back you up or you ended up with a new hire who didn't really know how to move the way you move and then it would throw everything off especially on really busy days it's like you'd be ringing and you need somebody to help on the floor a customer, but instead customers are coming up to you while you're ringing up a customer and asking you to look for something on the floor. And it's just like, where's the person who's on the floor who should be helping me? 
Anybody know? Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? <laughs> so, um, that became very annoying. And then there were certain cases where it's like, like I dominantly worked during the morning and it's like the schedule was just ridiculous because I'd be working a, I can't even remember now. It's been so long. It's like, I'd be working a, who knows, like a, a nine to five, let's say the stereotypical nine to five. And then it's like the next person that comes in is at 1 PM. Who's covering my 15. Like what, what? (laughs) And it's just like every, and then there were times where there'd be somebody coming in at 11 and this was like a two floor store. So, um, most of the people were so downstairs was like the adult department and I worked in the kids like Tyler baby department and it was just like whenever people would come in the majority of the people would be downstairs so there'd be two co-workers or sales associates plus a manager and that would just be me upstairs and it's like who's here to help me, (laughs) you know? And it's one of those things where as a worker, I could handle it. As a worker, I knew how to take care of the floor, maintain the floor and everything. But at the same time, just because I can handle it doesn't mean you should constantly put me in a situation where I have to open the bathroom for a customer, open the fitting room for a customer, help a customer on the floor, run back to the register and ring up somebody while somebody else on the floor is waiting for me to check for something in the back for them. Like, that's a lot for one person to do. Even if they can handle it, you shouldn't put somebody in a situation like that because it's just not right. And then there's three people downstairs and it's like dead. And it's like, why? (laughs) You know, why? So... There came a point where there was more, there was less of that sense of community or teamwork that I said I felt in the beginning and it just became a bunch of people who were new and like new hires and it just is very difficult to work in an environment like that. And on top of that, there was a point where I felt like the customers became very demanding and rude. I mean, it is retail, but at the same time, like, like stuff like that never sits well with me. It never sits well with me when somebody is willing to curse you out and belittle you and talk down to you over a discount over discount like there are people who are losing family members there are people who can't afford to eat at night and you are yelling at me over a discount did you reevaluate that did you think about that did you really like is it really that deep and it's just like there was a point towards like the end of my stay there working at this place that the customers were just really nasty and like, I remember there was this woman, and here, ooh, here's one of the things that irk me. Okay. So there was this woman, right? And I'm ringing her up. I, there was, there was nobody else on the line, so it was just her. And she's one of those stereotypical customers that come on the line. They're like, can you hurry up? I have to go somewhere. Meanwhile, she has a lot of items to be rung up. And while I am bringing up her items, she's going and looking through other things like nearby on the floor and she's shopping these other items. And then like she picks up a few more items and then she brings them over. And then as I'm still ringing up the ones she previously had there before, she's just like, you really need to hurry up or can you hurry up because I have somewhere to go. And it's like, in my head, I'm like, girl, like, how are you going to tell, first of all, I'm not moving on your time. I'm not. I'm not. Because as an individual, you chose to come to the store when you had something else to do. So if you have something else to do, go take care of that. But I'm not going to rush for you. I'm not. I'm working on my time. I'm not working on your time. Like, I'm here all day. I deal with customers like you all day. I'm not going to rush for you. I'm not. It's not worth it. Why? So if you have something to do, Put your clothes on hold. Go take care of whatever you need to do. 
come back tomorrow, but don't rush me. I'm not doing that. And then on top of that, you want to shop and tell me to hurry up? Really? Is that what we finna do? I don't think so. So she, um, so while she's doing this, and finally I finish ringing up all her items, and she becomes very specific with the change. So I think it was something where I was supposed to give her singles back in the change, but I didn't have um, the singles at all, so I had to give her the dollars and quarters. And she was telling me that she doesn't want change. She's just like, I don't want change. I don't want change. I want dollars. And I'm like, okay, so you're going to have to wait for my manager who's downstairs to come upstairs to get the money from the safe because all I have are the quarters. And she's just like, no, I'm not waiting. And it's like, she's arguing with me with the fact that she doesn't want change but at the same time isn't willing to wait for my manager to come upstairs to give her dollar bills so what do you want what do you want what do you want what do you want <laughs> so, so that irritated me so much and also that gave me so much anxiety because it's like I'm the only person behind the register there whoever else was working with me on the floor is on the floor helping other customers out. So it's me and this customer, this customer that's yelling at me. I'm getting anxiety. I have my draw open, like the um, change draw open. And it's like, it's one of those things where I kind of want to run. <laughs> like I kind of want to get out of this situation because I don't deserve it. And it's not okay. But at the same time, it's like, what do I do? Do I just give her the change and just walk away or do I wait for my manager to come but at the same time my manager I believe at the same time had a line downstairs so it was taking a while and eventually what happened was that I just gave her the change that I had in quarters and she left but it's like I felt so much anxiety from that um I believe that same day is one of those days where you just end up crying after work because I don't deserve that <laughs> nobody deserves that and um it was just a very upsetting situation to be in and there were a lot of times when customers did stuff like that like I remember there was one time when I was working on the floor and um in the morning time what we'll do of course like before a sale starts we'll take down other signs and then we'll put up the new promotion so the new promotion was up and then there were other signs that were taken down that were hanging off of a, um, it's called a baker's cart. So pretty much that cart is um, where we have the new product. So the stuff that we're moving onto the floor. So this isn't like a shoppable cart. It's just carts with new product. And um, we had the new product on it and there was a sign from the previous day's promotion. And a customer like scans the floor and then she's coming back to like leave um the department that we're in and she sees the sign on the side of the um baker's cart and she's just like she's just like um what's what's today's um promotion and i'm like it's whatever percentage off and she's just like oh well you have a sign up over there and you know i i could go downstairs and tell the manager that it's there and get that discount and i'm just like ma'am that's not a shoppable cart like that's not a display and like she takes the time to walk over to me get pretty much like this much in my face and say I can go downstairs and tell the manager you have that sign up and get that discount and it's just like what is the point of that what, what did you accomplish from getting in my face and telling me that first of all I just said you can clearly see on the floor you know where the clothing racks are and where you're supposed to shop you can see the promotion there but you're taking the time to come up to me get in my face and tell me that because a sign is on a cart that is not shoppable <laughs> you're willing to tell me you can get that discount and it's just like that's not how it works honey like why are you getting in my face over a discount over a discount <laughs> like really like the things that these people were willing to do over a discount it's like it just baffles me that people don't think about this they don't think about the fact that you're talking to a human being yes i work here yes this is my job but at the end of the day i'm still a human being i don't deserve that nobody deserves that don't talk to me like that 
because these customers are so caught up in the discount they want that they don't take a second to stop and think about how many customers that one person has to deal with. Meaning, I'm working nine to five. You don't know how many customers I have to deal with that have that same energy as you (laughs) that I have to deal with on a daily basis and go back home and pretend like it didn't happen. Act like I'm fine. Act like that isn't dehumanizing. Like, are you serious? (laughs) So (laughs) after a while of dealing with stuff like that, I was over it. Um, And on top of that, like even on the management side of this job, it felt like it felt like managers were so caught up with the new hires in terms of being upset about the new hires not knowing something but at the same time not teaching it to them. Um, they got so upset with the new hires doing what they did without teaching them how to correct the behavior that they started to kind of question my work ethic. And at that point it's just like You're putting me in situations where I have to do more than the average worker, but now because you're so caught up in what other people are doing, now you can't differentiate me between the new hires. That's a problem. (laughs) And it was very upsetting because it was, it was with someone, it was with a manager that I considered a friend. And yes, you should separate work from friendship but at the same time it's like I met this person in this work environment so I expect them to know me in this work environment you know what I mean it's like it's like if you become close with a manager if you become friends with a sales associate they should know your work ethic more than they should know you as like a regular schmegler person on the street you know (laughs) like and it's like it was just very upsetting and it was at a point when Like, I would go to work in the morning, and before the store even opened, I was dreading the day. It was 9 in the morning, 8 in the morning, and I was already dreading the day, and the store didn't even open. That's how I knew it was time to leave. That's how I knew that it was meant for me. And on top of that, it's like, I love fashion, and I love clothes, but at the end of the day, like... I'm an artist. I'm a creator. I want to build my brand. And working at this place took away the time I had to invest in my brand. It took away the time I had to work on drawings because I was so mentally and physically and spiritually drained from the customers and the BS I was dealing with, you know? And that's when I knew it was time to go. (laughs) Um, It's just one of those things where it's like, it's it's difficult. It's difficult in the sense of just knowing you gotta go. I think it's tough to just accept the fact that you need to leave a job because I think with leaving a job it's just like what's after this? Like where do I go and like what can I possibly do? And for me at first like at first I was thinking about getting another retail job and then I was just like, no, focus on your art. Like, this is what you want to do. Like, focus on your art. And I kind of went between... I don't know. I said, let me give myself one month to focus on my art and build my brand. And then I was like, let me give myself two months. (laughs) And the duration of time just became larger and larger. But the point being is that I left my job because I knew I deserved better. I had to recognize that within myself. And... I had bigger dreams, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with, um, I also want to say, like, there's nothing wrong if you want to work in the retail industry, there's nothing wrong with if you do work there, it's just, as an individual, we all know where we want to be, that's not where I wanted to be, I loved and appreciated the co-workers that I built, um, that I built a beautiful bond with, and they're literally like family to me but you can only deal with that for so long you know you can only deal with customers who are willing to talk down to you and disrespect you like that for so long and it wasn't worth it 
And it's one of those things where sometimes the thought of leaving sounds difficult, but then when you think of it on a larger scale of like, am I going to spend the rest of my life here? No. <laughs> That's what makes it easier to be like, all right, it's time to go. Like, we need to get out of here. That's why I left. I just, I wasn't happy. Like, you should never... You should never be working somewhere where you go in before the store even opens and be dreading the day. That's a problem. <laughs> so, because I knew that, I knew it was time to go. And it is what it is, you know. On the plus side, there were customers there that were really sweet and genuine and I really built built like a beautiful relationship with them because they'd come in and they talk about their family member who they're buying stuff for and they were super sweet and thankful for me even taking the time out of my day to help them find something on the floor so there were definitely customers who really made that job a wonderful experience and i definitely will say that i learned a lot just about communication because i'm very introvert and shy and i'm a to myself type of person and that job gave me an opportunity to really learn more about myself learn more about how I communicate and it's funny because there are some people that are just like you're so positive and there are people who um, would tell me that even like the way I spoke was very calming and very peaceful and I feel like sometimes I forget what I'm capable of and there were a lot of times when my coworkers or the customers that really appreciated me really showed me what I was capable of, you know? Um, and it was nice to have those little reminders because when you have customers that screw up your day, um, you kind of forget things like that. And it's beautiful to have those people there that really supported me and grounded me and brought me peace and love and light. And um, another thing that I find very interesting in terms of timing and the universe always working in everyone's favor. Uh, I did hear recently that, and it was something that like came up on the news and I don't even watch the news. So um, my mom had the news on and um, I kind of overheard it from the other room. And I heard that supposedly there are locations that are going to be closing um, of the specific brand. And it's kind of going to be like the locations of, um, stores that aren't doing that well and our store that was another thing they'd always push for sales and it was more so about getting a sale as opposed to treating you like a human so um I know that our store was I don't know like there were some things where we did good with sales and then there were other things where like getting card openings like credit card openings was um it fluctuated um there were good days and there were really bad days but um I don't know, like, I feel like our store was definitely one of the stores that may possibly fall under the category of struggling. So I find it, I mean, at this point, I don't know if the store that I worked at is going to be closing, but there's a part of me that's just like, if it does, look at how that worked out. <laughs> like, look at how it worked out in terms of me taking the time to really recognize my sense of self and self-worth and leaving before that happened. So if it does happen, that's another one of those like, God bless universe, God bless. <laughs> like, it's just one of those things where I just find very interesting. So I don't know how that's gonna play out, but um, we'll see. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Bless up, and until next time, sending out much peace, love, and enlightenment. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.